people who come to me are massively under eating, like rather than being wrecked after every session for a couple of days. Performance and recovery takes on like a whole new life of its own. The last is whether we want to admit it or not, is looking jacked. The best way for people to get in touch is go to the website unorthodoxnutrition.co.uk, any social media at Unorthodox Nutrition. Ask me whatever you like and I'm more than happy to answer anything. Yo, let's do this. Get up, I know y'all hear me. Show love when I'm in your city. Whoa, 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 na, na, na. So this is our preliminary prelim bout, 87 kilos. It's also our only gi, uh, gi bout on tonight's card. Yusuf Nabi and Matt Inman, a lot of people looking forward to this matchup. Let's get the action started. Our next bout is in the light heavyweight division and is scheduled for 10 minutes. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner. Please welcome Yusuf. Nappy. So yeah, we've seen Yusef uh, a couple of times on Polaris already. Really, uh, really great match actually. Last out with um, Dan Pakan yeah, in the gi as well. Was a fantastic round. Really fun, entertaining back and forth battle. Uh, teaches out of Elements down in Brighton. Represents Czech match. And yeah. you know what? You, you said it's, it's a really gi match tonight, and I think you know this is one of those occasions. Well, they're, they're where both guys who are going to push the pace in the gi. That's this, yeah. like. this has a very good chance of kind of showing how excited gi jiu jitsu can be. All the matches that Yusuf's had on Polaris or that are yeah. ever anyway, they have been exciting, even though they're older guys, even though it's in the gi. You know, we've, we've seen a few boring, slow matches tonight, no gi, and I think that hopefully the gi is going to show us how it's done. But you can yes. believe I'd ever say that. I know. And now fighting out the red corner, Matt Inman. So Matt Inman is going to be his opponent here tonight. He's currently representing London Grapple after relocating down to the capital from his hometown of Manchester. Obviously a long time Keystone member of SBG Manchester and coach there after the late great Carl Tanswell passed away, but uh, making his home in London now. Seen him a couple of times before. And guys, he's got some crazy ambitions for competition this year. Yeah, so his plan for this year is to have 100 matches over the course of 2023. He's already at about 50 plus, which is insane. That's, you know, in, a, in a six months, that's a lot yeah. of competing. He yeah, just competes everywhere. Pretty much yeah. every gi, no you gi, can do. weight absolute, yeah. everything. Yeah, so so. He's someone who's not maybe particularly well known in the grappling community yeah, because, because of his let, MMA background, right. but he's extremely highly respected I was, I was as say, a grappler let, in the let's MMA world. Not forget, he was a, a long time standout of, of British MMA. Yeah. Fought a long cage draw. He's had some fantastic wins there. Outstanding Muay Thai as well. But yeah, grappling's his home now. Let's get the action started. Our next bout, light heavyweight division, scheduled for 10 minutes. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, representing Elements and Checkmat from the United Kingdom. Please welcome Yusuf Nabi. And now his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, representing London Grapple. Let's welcome from the United Kingdom, Matt Edmund.
So white gi for Inman, black gi for Nabi. Quick pull for yeah, uh, quick pull from Nat Inman, there, but yeah. Nabi sits straight back on the leg, looking to yeah, he has work some, on it, uh, single hook. He has some very, very tight foot locks. You can see him readjusting and getting into the position yeah, straight away. This, he's deep on that ankle all yeah. the way back. You see that Inman's trying to hand fight. That inside hook is a really good position for foot locks because it creates the bend. It allows you to get good pressure against the leg. Yeah, most people are used to putting it on the outside of the hip, but really going under the knee can help really stretch the opponent out and does the same thing of, of stopping their movement. Yeah, it gives you better distance control as well because you can press against the ribs. It's something that Mikey Musumeshi does, who has probably the best straight foot locks out there, maybe other than Matthias Szczynski, who we're going to see later. But, um, you know, very savage from this position. I think Matthias uses the same thing, actually. Yeah, so Nabi is constantly elevating here. He's constantly keeping uh, Inman's balance tested here, but Inman's got a little bit of purchase on that foot now, driving the weight through it, using that collar to pull himself in tighter. Yeah, I mean, Yusuf has a great position to either sweep from the bottom yeah. or to then attack from the straight foot. Like you can see he's got the hands, he can off balance. Yeah, and we're obviously forgetting what Nabi's doing with his left hand as well, that super strong pant grip. Yeah, and he's got a free leg to defend. If, you know, if Inman brings that foot too much into the center, he can switch it into kind of like a, an Ioki lock in the center of the body as well. And there, Inman, you see, recognizes the danger and strips that grip. Yusuf trying to go to the, the lapel here, which can be, again, a, a good adjustment to tighten up the leg lock position. Makes it much more difficult to finish, but gives you better control over it. Yeah, Inman uh, using collar grips at the moment to keep uh, Nabi compressed a little bit, stop him extending away, which is when he can really start to put that foot lock into play. Yeah, it's going to be a, a little interesting to see how they score this, uh, you know, talking about the points and whatnot, because Inman ended up on top because Yusef fell off the top to go for that, that leg lock position. I think you've got, to, you've got to be giving it so far to Yusef. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Now, Yusef has been pretty much dictating the match from here. Well, Inman strips that outside hook now, and let's see if he can... It almost looks like he's going to try and long step if he can get his... Uh, his grip out, but I don't think Nabi's going to give up that straight foot lock grip anytime soon. Yeah, you see Nabi goes back in towards it, and now using it to come up and again immediately attack you. Chingan trying to step on the hip well, and apply the pressure. We, we, we've seen basically uh, Yusuf is just having control on this leg, and then he's opening up the ability to, or open up the opportunity to really put pressure on it via threatening with the sweep. So this is the third time that we've seen Yusuf go for you know, really go for it, not just hold the position, but actually try and apply the submission. So it's a, an, an interesting one about how do you score this? Do you score this as three foot lock attempts? Do you score it as one foot lock yeah. attempts? Yeah. At the moment, his grip looks a little bit too low down on the collar. He's using that single hand grip on the collar, which is again a benefit of having the gi. Uh, and then he's framing against uh, Inman's knee to try and create the pressure. But Inman's stripping the collar grip lower and lower, which is going to take the pressure off the foot. Yeah, we're coming into the end of the first scoring period here, and I think the judges are probably going to see it go the way of Nabi because he's the one it's dictating most of it. And this it's is very deep. Very tight. You see Inman raising up, and it looks there. like he wants to tap. He's thinking about it. That is a serious That's bend on his foot. I mean, yeah. I wow. Mean, he really is thinking. I can't tell whether he... I mean, Yusuf recovering and again re-engaging on the foot. Well, he's, he's escaped he's not the heel on it. Yeah, he's escaped the but heel now. But I think now, Matt is just, about to try and, is just about to be able to pull that foot out, and he finally does. Nabi again going straight back to the leg, though. He's looking to pull it back over the top of the shin, yeah. which he does. Works it back in. Of course, that pan grip as well allows him to haul straight it back, back in. Straight back into position. Yeah, the other thing that we talked about is now the resilience of that foot is probably going to be weakened. Compromised a little you bit. Know, he's going to have a lot of stretch on the tendons, and that's going to make it harder to defend the next one. Well, let's see, we've got about six minutes left here, and Nabi again looking to work the gi around. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what he's trying to do with that lapel, because he hasn't actually tried to switch it to the other hand. He might just be using it as like a reinforcement to stop the foot getting pulled off. It's a distraction. Yeah. That could well be as well, but... Uh, no, I, I doubt <laughs> it's actually a testing, I mean, uh, a lot of work for that. Testing uh, Inman's base again. Kicking him well extended here over the top. It's interesting to see him static in this position. I perhaps thought he would have transitioned off this. Nabi could potentially use this to drag the hip. But again, going back into a nice lasso. Inman now in a much better position. Yeah, as he looks to try and drive the hips through. And again, very strong grips from yeah, you, Nabi Yusuf here. Yusuf doesn't look like he has any intention at all of taking top position. He's had many opportunities, both with that foot and without the foot. He doesn't look like he's trying to take uh, the top position at all. Well, as we hit the halfway point in this match, it's close guard for Yusuf Nabi. 
Yeah, he did. A, it was a really nice little bit of guard control he did there as well. You know, Inman was putting a little ton of pressure down on top of him. Yusef just used the lasso, controlled the distance, uh, and when Inman dropped, the, the old school tied about trick. <laughs> Listen, they're black belts, man. Yeah, and they're uh, old. You know, you got to you got to uh, <laughs> you got to get the breaks where you can. Well, 42 years old for Yusef Nabi and 36 years old for Matt Inman. Okay, maybe not that old. <laughs> not that old. No, no. Just black belt. Yeah. <laughs> Close guard for Nabi here. Let's see what he looks to do with a different sort of gripping game now. Going on the collar. I mean, yeah, you know, if Inman stands up, he's going to look to grab the ankle, re-enter yeah. into yeah, he's gonna drop inside. that X. Yeah. But now you can see that. I'm not sure what... Oh, it looks like Yusef's trying to go for the... Um, An Ezekiel from the yeah, bottom? Yeah, the Ezekiel yeah. from the bottom. Reached over the back, tried to grip inside his own gi. Again, Inman dropping to the knees. Excellent little bit of leg pummeling yeah, from some, Yusuf. Some dexterity from Nabi here, getting that outside hook all the way over the top, trying to perhaps again play that lasso game. Yeah. Inman trying to get around that leg. And Yusuf just kind of switching it from the hip to the inside reverse the heaver position, but not letting Inman get really close to him, which is, you know, good distance control. Nice work from referee Oli Geddes. Yeah, just noticing a, a, toe. Uh, a foot stuck in the... Uh, the draw cord of the pants there. Nice open guard work from Yusuf here as uh, Matt tries the pass, but oh. it looks like Yeah, this is the best position so far for Inman, but nice, nice. job from Yusuf. And recovering. it was a lot Back of work to get to guard. half yep. a side control yep. position. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, it look, you know, Yusuf's not actually doing that much work on bottom to maintain his guard. He's yeah. also not panicking when he's in these kind of positions. Inman's doing quite a lot to right, not, to like, force those. you know, he's having to maintain the pressure on top. You know, he's having to fight through Yusuf's uh, legs, you know. Well, Inman's got his hands connected in a half guard position here with some heavy top pressure. He's got about three minutes left to work, and it'd be nice for him to have some more decisive offense in this bout. He's been yeah. uh, having to defend a lot of the time. It's interesting. I'm not sure how they're going to score that second period because, you know, when did he, uh, Yusef, get into the close guard? Did Yusef really do anything from the close guard? No, yeah. the so second period little, was... Look at the uh, leg pummel here. Went, you know, a good minute into the second period, I believe, uh, Yusef still had that foot lock. And I think when right. he applied that really, the really close one, I actually think was in the second period. So, mm. Yeah, defi that, that definitely was. So I think yeah. you've got to assume that, that, that Yusuf is two up going into this third. and yeah. you know, Unless Matt can get a submission, in my opinion, that this is going to go to... Uh, Yusuf being quite kind of laid back in this position. He's not trying to... you know. Oh, he he's bridging into this underhook now, trying to get back. Yeah. He does a good job of retaining guard, at least Inman, partially. Yeah, Inman doing a great job just stepping straight back over. Oh, and Yusuf in. going for the Ezekiel again from the bottom. Again, it looks like he has the hand position, but he doesn't have that leg gripped up. And now working harder to recover and get back to somewhere. Yeah, again, Inman's going to put the passing pressure on here. I do love the attitude of a man willing to sacrifice his guard in order to go for a highly low percentage. Yeah, that really locks submission. you into your partner. Yeah. Take away both your arms. And a high, high low percentage. A high, highly <laughs> low percentage. Yeah. Uh, so Inman with Opposed the top pressure. To a lowly high percentage. We've got... Uh, Minute 30 left on the clock here. One more preliminary bout coming your way. It's a ladies' bantamweight match at 60 kilos. Inman doing a great job. I'd love him to feed that lapel around the neck and use that bra grip to create a little bit more pressure. It would also give him a hand free to start working. Yusef's oh, trying to sweep up on bridge. top. Beautiful Takes work. It. And he looks up at the clock as well. Yeah, no, that's probably going to do it for him in oh, this, 100%. this bout. And he looks like he's going to hit this pass Lovely as well. Lovely leg, leg work. Beautiful, Beautiful leg, leg work, work yeah. from Yusef. Oh, Inman nice just guard regain from Matt yeah, here. Just got the knee back inside. Well, over under pass. I think Yusuf's going to yeah. pass off to this left side. Well, Yusuf also has the benefit of being able to slow play a little bit more now right, as well. Right, because he knows he's probably up. Yeah. He's only 48 yep. seconds left. I mean, Inman's kind of got to just throw something here. And he's what a, that is, I don't know. He's in a good position as well, as long as he doesn't kind of rush and uh, lift his head up too much. Yusuf might also just drop back for this foot. Yeah, he certainly could do. Find himself in that uh, that X again. Yeah, I guess it depends on and how he's trying to shoot is. the triangle. You see him putting all that, that tension in the, the grips and the feet. Got to do something. Might as well go for it. Yeah. Now he might try and go for like a one arm triangle or something. Uh, Yusef's just using that knee in the center to prevent their hips coming up. And now he's re looks like he's re pummeled the arm inside. Inman going back in towards like a uh, almost like a spider. Yeah, he's trying position. to shoot, he's trying to shoot it. He's trying to go for the triangle. 
It's not gonna... Yusef is just like, I'm on top, I'm staying yeah. here. Time rides out. I mean, he's, look, he's been doing this a very long yeah. time. He knows where he's safe, he knows yeah. where he's in danger. And a great performance by Yeah, Yusuf. really I solid. Mean, I mean, we are assuming that he's got the victory there. I mean, I love that footlock position he started with. Yeah. He yeah. seemed like he had answers for uh, you know, any possible off-balances or counters. Yeah. It's such it's... a strong position when you're in it. Let's take a look at some of the replays here. This was right back at the start, getting a bite on that straight foot. Yeah, I mean, this was, I think, the best footlock he had, where he managed to turn him belly down, yeah, almost this, this like is towards the, one, and the then, bad side. And then side. he was here for like, and you saw the hand of Matt. I could, it was like his body looked yeah. like he was going to tap, but his face was pretty stoic the entire time. And then Matt just got his hips a little bit too far away, too close to Yusef's legs, and Yusef just bridged over the top and regained top position. Great match. Let's go ahead and make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, go to the judges' scorecards, and they see it for your winner by unanimous decision, Yusuf Nabi. Well, as expected, Yusuf Nabi is going to rack up another win here in the Gi on Polaris. Always entertaining. Congratulations to Matt Inman. We've got one more preliminary bout coming your way, and in about an hour's time, we are going to go live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass for our main card. Seven bouts, two title fights in the welterweight and lightweight division. Join us again very shortly. So tell of the tape for our final preliminary bout here at Polaris 24 to 60 kilo women's bantamweight match. Julia Scardone and 
Chanel Dyer. Let's get the action started. Our next bout is in the women's bantamweight division and is scheduled for 10 minutes. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner. Please welcome Julia Scarto. Well, first to the match here, the mat here, Julia Scardo. She is splitting between the United Kingdom and Brazil and currently representing Carlson Gracie Hull. Yeah, Ju's been over in the UK for, I think, since she was 14, maybe a little bit younger than that. She's a very, very high-level judoka, represented the UK. Won, uh, I think she got bronze in the Pan Ams. Gee, who else do we know out of Carlson Gracie Hull, who's a high-level judoka? Well, yeah, her, that her would be... Partner. Her partner. Yeah, her partner. <laughs> Um, Owen Livesey's also out of that. So, you know, she trains extensively there. Very, very solid game. Great takedowns. Really loves to push the pace as well. Yeah, we saw Julia on, uh, on the last uh, Polaris, actually, up in Gold Coast. Uh, she was pretty dominant and then ended up being, yeah. uh, getting caught in an armbar by Melinda Hill. Yeah, she was like, came out like a, a, a firecracker, got to Mal, and just kind of, you know, lost control for a few moments and uh, ended up getting armbar. And I was welcome her opponent fighting out of the red corner, Chanel Tiger. Chanel Dyer is her opponent here tonight. She is representing a great Britain top team. A little bit younger than her opponent, eight years younger in fact, at 22 years old. Yeah, Chanel is someone that you should keep an eye on. Uh, not specifically for grappling, but in the MMA world. She is possibly the, one of the biggest prospects for MMA coming out of the UK today. I mean, unbelievable records uh, uh, at amateur. Uh, and, and considering her incredibly young age, uh, a real one to look out for. Well, certainly getting stuck in and enjoying the walk out here. Yeah, she's going to have a little bit of a height advantage over Ju. But of course, if we talk about the judo coming in, the yeah, uh, yeah. a little bit shorter to get underneath, not, uh, not too bad. Let's get the action started. Our next bout is in the women's bantamweight division and is scheduled for 10 minutes. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner, representing Carlson Gracie Hull from the United Kingdom, Julia Scarton. And now her opponent fighting out of the red corner, representing Great Britain top team. Let's welcome from the United Kingdom, Chanel Tiger. Your referee for this final preliminary bout is Greg Creel, Josh Palmer, Tom Bolo, Dan Strauss. Matt side for you here. So I've spent a little bit of time training with Ju. She's got a great upper body, uh, like grips, control, head positioning, things like that. Um, very strong in those positions as well. And she does a great job of linking it into her judo throws. You can see aggressively pushing forwards now. Yeah, trying to claim dominance over that head. Yeah, she uses a lot of like inside trips and things to set up the head control. And once she gets to the head control that she likes, then she's all about like big hip tosses and things like that. So Dyer trying to create some frames here. Oh, there you go. There's that inside trip you mentioned, Tom. Yeah. Nice little uh, attempt there. But now you can see Ju's hips starting to turn. That should be a warning sign to Chanel that she needs to uh, do something. Well, they found the edge of the mats and uh, let me get uh, pushed back to the middle here. Nice pace at the start of this one, though. Very aggression, aggressive from both ladies. Yeah. Yeah, I think this one's going to be scrappy throughout. Yeah, this is going to be, I, I, I suspect it's going to be a bit of a stand-up battle until someone gets kind of top control. Um, but I think we're going to see a lot more action in the stand-up yes. than we have in possibly... Uh, I mean, yeah, we've matches. we've already seen it in a lot of the, in a lot of the match. See, she's oh, trying to get that, that hip oh, control, oh, trying to get the hip toss. her back here. 
This is going to be a massive for Chanel if she's able to get the take now. Wow, and Jiu does a hands. great job of yeah, separating those hands. I love the way that Jiu immediately comes back right. in. She turns, strips the grips, yeah. comes back they in. Didn't, they, like, didn't, they didn't break it. No, you know. there was no like a single attack from either girl. You know, like Chanel did a great job of, of, of timing that turn and taking the back, and then Jiu immediately re-engaged afterwards. Well, this is the thing. With that high-level uh, MMA background that Chanel's bringing in, she's going to be a lot more composed and a lot more skilled in the wrestling oh, than again. a lot She's of trying the to grapplers. Shark. It looks the trying to get the there we go. Oh. Now Chanel possibly jumping on the back here. Yeah, yeah. There she goes. Oh, wow. Works as well. Great job from Chanel. That's one of the issues that you tend to find with Judica when they when they, they go to the, the ground, they get so trained to drop into yeah. that turtle position and just hunker down and wait for the restart. But it was, a, it was a very difficult uh, counter to the throw attempt from Daesh, looking to maintain I'd back control I'd here. I'd like to see Chanel switch to a body triangle here. It's going to well, tie up. She's got the height. She's got the length so much. I mean, yeah. there's so much looseness in the legs here because of that the, the length of her legs. Six, six inches taller is Chanel Dyer. She should be looking to tie up a body triangle here or... You know, if, if, if Julia reaches down to try and strip one of those hands, even isolating one of the arms. Yeah, Ju just made a little bit of a mistake. She had pretty good inside control on the arm, and then she reached down towards the leg and lost one of those grips. But now, she's not doing a good job of maintaining back control. Yeah, just taking a look up at the screen, and she's going straight on the face here. Big squeeze. Uh, good job from Ju defending the grips. Well, now she's done the work up top. She's got to try and clear one of those hooks, trying to shake her off the top here. Yeah. Yeah, she's getting into a bit of a better position, though. Like, Ooh, stand stand standing tall, up though. against a terrible stand idea. Tall. Chanel Dyer again is just going to go on the face. Like Jude needs to strip that grip again. She did a good job of using it before. Well, I'd like to see her turn her hand around here. She's gone palm forward, which is going to make it easier to strip the grip. It's much, much yeah. harder to defend the bat position when you're standing because you've got to yeah. worry about what you're doing on the feet. Yeah, a little it, bit of a tactical mistake. Although, you know, it's forcing Chanel to care, like, stay up in that position too. Well, I mean, the one advantage could be if she can split the hands oh, because the legs of, of oh, Chanel are so long, it's hard her back to down. stay on the back. Really nice. Again, no delay in moving yeah. to the next transition from Dyer, and she's got a good position on top here. Got this half guard. Solid positioning By as the well way, should, Dyer. should point out we're through the first uh, scoring yeah. period here, yeah. so Dyer probably going to take that one. She did get to the back uh, in that first period, so... I mean, I've got to say, so far, the women putting on the uh, yeah, I agree. The match That's of the great, night. Great right match. Right now, four minutes in. Coming to scrap, right? Absolutely. So this is uh, heavy shoulder pressure up top <laughs> from Dyer. I enjoy Ju just moving the hair out gently <laughs> before she sets her grip. <laughs> she needs to be careful not to let, let Dyer just step that leg free. Dyer's going towards the mount again. I mean, it is going to be difficult uh, for, for Dai the control and mount position here just because of how much longer her legs are relative to the short yeah. torso. Right, she's going to have to play such Julia. a high mount. See, if Julia's Julia not to be careful, careful, she's going to get turn, the back yeah. position again. Approaching the halfway mark in this final preliminary bout. A reminder, nice. join us at uh, half past the hour on the dot, 7.30 p.m. GMT for our main card. Looks like she's going for like a, a wrist lock here, which is... And it nice use, her to use of it up. to get to the bat, to the mount position. Yeah, and she can work that arm up. Well, she gives it up yeah. now, but had the arm isolated for a moment. Yeah, not great positioning from Ju on the bomb. She needs to keep those limbs inside. So I actually think, uh, I mean, I think that, that maybe attacking from the mount position could be a good option here if Chanel is able to get those arms high and come up into a S mount position. And well, yeah, yeah, I think the, I the think elbows are well. Possible triangle. On the I think she here. might try. And yeah, I thought. But, Potential triangle using the Goga Platter position, yep. you know, that mono platter situation as well, with the, when she's reaching around the body. So Even she's that trying to the expose turn, yeah. these elbows, she's trying to open up here. Well, Scardone's got to really start moving here. Well, it's actually kind of the way that she's pushing on it is helping Ju out because it's keeping her arms in. Yeah. Oh, now she's going to go down. The switch. Arm. There's the switch. Yeah, it's all about the angle of the arm here. If Chanel can come off to the side, well, Jude's got to be careful about losing the grip. I would, from here, just no, no, no. She wants to go to a tighter position. Yeah, a bit of a mistake, a bit of a blunder on that gripping position on the arm. For a second there, it looked really tight. She just had to commit and sit off to the Jude side. Oh, she's going to take the yeah, back. But, Oh, and she's going to have to defend an arm bar falling keep, off the top, yeah, perhaps. She needs to come back at the back. Is here. the arm passed? It could be. I think there could be a, a reverse triangle from here, from the back. Yeah, it's potential, but. I think Ju's doing a good job of controlling that head leg out underneath here, her. So, arm yeah, still is, a wrist, this though. This is going to be on the arm of the Kimura. Now, Chanel, Chanel also Chanel needs Kimura. to be... Yeah, she needs to be careful not to get her own arm tangled up in it. Kimura's are essentially 50-50 positions. If Ju can step around the head, she'd be in an arm bar herself. 
Not with that leg there. So though. Chanel either wants to roll through or she wants to grab onto the ankle and roll with Julia onto her back. Oh, She's able see. to do that. I mean, the Kimura grip is there. The armbar will be there if she can just, but the physicality of Ju, I think, yeah, well, that's pulling that. that arm out of the position, but works the arm back Chanel's inside. Chanel's not letting it go without a fight. Oh, it's getting a bit freer here, though. No, the, yeah, the hand getting out. She should out. do the same thing again. She did a great job of just kneeling on it. There we go, trying to trap it back inside. Yeah, create that angle. She should be able to pull it free yeah, now. Well, she free now. We are now through the second scoring period, which you got to say is probably going to go to Dyer as well. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt where either of the scoring periods are going so far. And now Ju needs to work. Well, she, yeah, she's got and she's she got needs a to chance start putting to that pressure work. in. You know, she's the only to force <laughs> that leg down, step over that leg, but they're long legs with that foot. Yeah, in the hips. she needs to. Oh, oh nice over platter. Full on over platter. Oh, 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 oh. We could see an over platter oh, finish. Oh, hands moving. Tap. The hand was moving there. Yeah. Oh. Is she gonna, I mean, when was the last time go we saw her around, around the head? She Pilar. needs to roll through. Especially no gi as well. Yeah, she needs to roll through. This is not the the correct hit. Oh, she's got a flattened out here. There's the tap. Was it a wrist lock in the end? Yeah, I think so. Chanel Dyer getting it done in our final preliminary bout here. I mean, I said she's one to look out for, and that Ooh. is why. What an unreal yeah, great performance. performance. I mean, the armor, it looked like it could have been the armor platter. I think she just got on the wrist at the end. I'm going to be yeah. slightly sad uh. if it wasn't an armor <laughs> you, were, you were so excited. <laughs> so we were excited. finally going to see <laughs> a, a, an armor platter shoulder lock here. But what but, a uh, performance. Yeah, she did, she did fantastic. Let's have a look at some of the replays from that bout, see what we can pick apart. This was this standing rear naked choke position. Yeah, I mean, you know, Judy did a great job of fighting out of this position, but most of the action was going, you know, Chanel's way. She was doing a great job of connecting her techniques. This was a mistake. Yeah. Jude threw her arm too deep into that position and then didn't react quick enough. Yeah, controlled the tricep. I wonder well. if we can get a good angle. Yeah, the, I mean, uh... this is basically where it's going to happen. You can see her elbow's trapped, and all Chanel needs to do is just push down on that wrist, and it's, uh, she's going to get the wrist lock. Yeah, let's have a look here. So looking to go around the head, there's that wrist trapped. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Push down on the wrist. Yeah, push down on the wrist, and that is going to be a wrist lock submission. What fantastic work from Chanel Dyer. Let's go ahead, get her hand raised. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by submission via an Oma Plata, Chanel Dyer. Chanel Dyer takes the win here in our final preliminary bout. Thrilling stuff indeed. Now, we of course have seven fights coming your way on our main card in about 45 minutes. Join us live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass. We've got some outstanding bouts, a lot of UK versus Europe matches going on. Jason Rao, Matty Holmes, Keith Corian, Tom Halpin, Hunter Colvin, Owen O'Flanagan. Of course, a lightweight belt on the line between Nathan, or Nathan Orchard and Ethan Krellenston. And Mateusz Szczynski is going to match Jed Hugh for our main event and our welterweight title. Go ahead and join us again at 7.30 p.m. GMT, 2.30 p.m. Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific for more Polaris 24 action. We'll see you shortly. UFC fighter Corey McKenna here. I used Mike last August. I would highly recommend him to any other athletes looking to safely and efficiently reach their competitive weight goals. My name is Daniel Strauss. I think that there is no one else out there in the UK who is as knowledgeable and experienced 
when it comes to nutrition, especially for jiu-jitsu athletes. I'm Lloyd Cooper. I used unorthodox nutrition. The effect was great, hugely recommended. It did a really, really good job. My name's Leonie Munslow. Since I've been working with unorthodox nutrition, I've never missed weight. The devil is in the detail with Mike, and it really works. A lot of people think, oh, well, I'm only like a hobbyist of a white belt doing two or three sessions a week. That's perfect. Most of my clients are not the pros. It's the everyday guys, the hobbyists, who want to get the most from their training. The difference that we can make to the average BJ hobbyist is threefold. First is health, making them feel better, making them sleep better. The second would be performance. Most people who come to me are massively under eating, like rather than being wrecked after every session for a couple of days performance and recovery takes on like a whole new life of its own. The last is whether we want to admit it or not is looking jacked. The best way for people to get in touch is go to the website unorthodoxnutrition.co.uk any social media at Unorthodox Nutrition ask me whatever you like and I'm more than happy to answer anything. Yo let's do this. Get up.